Thanks for coming. Still in the morning time? Yeah. I'm out. All right. Good morning. I want to thank you all for uh, joining us today. Today is uh, a very important day. It's a historic day. Uh, we're here to talk about the Groveland Four, and I'm really excited. Um, we're going to have a couple of people come and speak to you about the Groveland Four. Uh, but I want to first start out by saying, you know, with this uh, injustice, we, the state of Florida, we were wrong. Uh, the injustice these men and their families encountered are hard to really just truly put into words. The memories can't be erased. The pain they've endured can't be fixed. But today, we have an opportunity to provide closure to these families in the form of an apology. The resolution is simply the right thing to do. I am going to ask my Senate uh, sponsor, Senator Farmer, to come forward and share a couple of words, followed by our speaker uh, in the House, uh, Speaker Corcoran. Thank you, Representative DeBose. Uh, I am honored uh, to be here today. I am honored to be a sponsor of this meaningful legislation. Um, we cannot turn back the hands of time. But we can recognize when mistakes are made and try to right those mistakes and at least give some peace and closure to families who've suffered for so long. Uh, this bill uh, is, is meaningful to so many folks who have endured for so long the pain and the heartbreak of a wrongful accusation. And it's a dark chapter in our state's history. But while we can't stop the, or turn back the hands of time, we can try to right those wrongs when we see them. And I'm, I'm so proud to be with this group and, and to have been part of a team that uh, has done something so meaningful. So many uh, pieces of legislation pass through these halls every day. And um, very rarely, though, do we get a feel-good moment like this. And so uh, today, the moral arc of the universe bends towards Tallahassee and it shines on us. And we're very proud to be here, very proud to give these families some closure and some justice and some redemption. So thank you all for being here. I just want to first uh, thank Senator Farmer and, and Representative DeBose for the great work they've done on this. I also want to thank Chairman Sprouls and Chairman Metz um, for all the work they've done. I think it's been well said by Representative DeBose and, and um, Senator Farmer, it's a, it is a, a dark cloud on our history, um, and hopefully, to some degree, these, this apology and, and recognizing um, the families and what they've gone through and having them be here and see us pass it off the floor will be, uh, get, hopefully, bring them some further along the road of feeling that there is uh, justice in society. I think what's telling about the entire story is what happens when those that you swear into office and put in positions of leadership don't seek truth and justice, um, the depth of depravity that, that can be reached is limitless. And, and I think it's a challenge, this story, not just for our state, but for our nation and for all of us in office to always seek truth and justice. Um, without it, you have these types of events. So it's a, it's a great honor to be here. It's a great honor to meet the family members and the author uh, for bringing this to light. And uh, hopefully this will bring up, as, as Gary said, uh, it'll be a little bit of a, a bright moment on a, a very dark, a situation in our state's history. Thank you. Also, uh, I'm going to ask Chair Sprouse, who uh, played a uh, huge role, as well as the speaker, in helping us to draft the language. And we'll also hear from uh, Senator Thompson when she was in the Senate. She was an uh, individual who championed this early on. So I want to thank her. Uh, this, everyone that's here today that you'll hear from, the best way I can describe this is like a big, big puzzle, and everyone had a piece of the puzzle to, to play to get us to this point. Uh, and with that, I'll ask Chair Sprouse to 
come for it. We're happy all to play it, just a, just a small piece of that puzzle. And I think the speaker, the speaker touched on this, but I think that when we look back at our, you know, our greatest successes and triumphs as a, as a state and as a people, we can only truly realize what those are if we, we acknowledge our greatest moral failings. And this was this case of the Groveland Four was one of them. And there's nothing that I could say about the case that you know, Mr. King and his book, uh, The Devil in the Grove, didn't say, already say better. But what I will say is I got the opportunity several weeks ago to speak to, to Carol Greenlee, uh, who's here with us today. And she talked to me about how when she was a little girl, you know, 12 years old when her dad got out of prison. It wasn't until she was a grown woman, nearly 40, uh, when she actually asked her dad about what happened. And I think when we read a book like The Devil in the Grove or we read about the stories of these great moral failings like this case, sometimes we, we forget that there were families and communities that awful, awful, uh, also suffered just terrible and grave injustices like the families that are behind us today. And for that, as a state, we're just truly sorry. Uh, for, for what took place. Um, it, was a, it was a terrible tragedy, and we are, we're grateful today through the work of Senator Farmer, Bobby DeBose, uh, folks, like, uh, folks like these, these two young people over here who started a, a letter writing campaign to the legislature to make sure that this was, was never forgotten. And today, with the passage of this resolution, uh, it will never be forgotten. Thank you. I know we've all heard that uh, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And I took a step a number of years ago to acknowledge the injustice that was done to the Groblin Four. And if you view this as a relay race, uh, I've handed the baton and it has been taken and we're further down the road and I want to thank Representative DeBose, I want to thank Senator Farmer, uh, for their actions to bring this to the finish line. When you're injured, when you're harmed uh, at the hands of others, many times it means so much to have someone say, I'm sorry. And so this, rep uh, this resolution represents the state of Florida, leaders uh, in this state saying, I'm sorry. And we want these families to um, know that they do have leaders who listen, they do have leaders who care, and I am just delighted to be here today to see this come to fruition. And uh, with that being said, uh, we're gonna actually hear from a couple of descendants from the Groveland Four. Uh, we have uh, members of the Greenlee family as well as the Shepherd family. So we're gonna ask um, uh, Carol Greenlee and Jeanette Shepherd to come forward, please. This is a glorious day. <clears throat> and still today, the tears are hard to hold back. But today, the tears are tears of joy. And I want to thank all of you, all of you. <clears throat> for releasing my family from prison, from releasing my nieces, my son, my brothers, from the dark cloud, the shame and the stigma that have been put upon them, and releasing me for 67 years. I was the child. I was the baby that my father went to Groveland to find a job to support back in 1949. And today, I feel free. I feel like I can talk about it. I feel like I can sit down with my nieces and nephews and brothers and tell the story that my father, at my age, 40, held back the tears to tell me. Thank you. Thank you, State of Florida. Thank you, House of Representatives. Thank you, Senators, for releasing the Greenlee family. God bless you.
Hi, I'm Jeanette um, Shepherd Tatum. Um, my uncle was Sam Shepherd. Okay. Um, imagine just one day I wanted to do a family tree, and I started digging through the internet trying to find information about my family history, and I came across the Grove of the Four. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm like, shepherd, shepherd, oh my God, that sounds like my, my dad, my granddad, that sounds like my uncle, you know, um, and I seen Gary's name. I got on the phone, I, I, I emailed Gary, and I think it was Robert Thompson at the time from the University of Central Florida. They was doing a documentary. Is this for real? <laughs> um, and it was. And this is how I found out. And that was back in about 2004, 2003, when Gary Kassir had first did the first book, The Sad Saga of a Lethal Let, uh, Lynching. And then I read the, well, I tried to read the book. <laughs> it took me a while to read both books. Um, I read, I cried, I read, I cried, and, and it finally got through it. But this has been a long time coming, and it is so much that we appreciate that y'all have done this far. Um, I grew up not knowing anything about this. Um, I, Sam, we just knew he was in the army and he was killed at that time, they say, by my dad, was um, some bad people. Um, but, um, so it took all of them, pretty much, my dad, his sisters, my dad is Henry Shepherds, which is Sam's brother, he was the baby brother. He was only like 13, 14 when this happened. Uh, so it was a dramatic experience for him. We felt it the whole entire time growing up. Okay. Um, James Shepard was Vivian, which is my cousin. Um, dad was also one of the brothers. And they also had um, Fanny and Irene with sisters. Um, so it was a big family. Our home was the one that they raided and burnt down and sunk my grandma and granddad running and from Groveland, the area. Um, so I never really got a chance to meet my granddad. I just meet him through this. Um, I meet Sam through this. Um, and this is how I grew to know him and hearing all the experiences from the books and from what people were saying and everything like that. Um, my dad, none of his sisters, none of them talked about it at all. Um, so today, this means a real a lot. Um, I think everybody uh, on the Shepherd's family behalf for everything you have done, for all the love, for all the support uh, that have you given us and that you will continue to give us. Thank you for the Shepherd family. And uh, <clears throat> as we um, bring this to a close, we're going to hear from Gilbert King, who uh, wrote the book, The Devil in the Grove. And um, after uh, Gilbert speaks, we're going to bring a young author, uh, Ben Polsky, a young man who was so inspired by this story that he wrote a uh, children's version and started a uh, book club back home in uh, Broward County. Over. Thank you. Today marks a willingness to recognize and confront a grave injustice. Sadly for the families of the Groveland boys, this bill cannot alter the tragic course of history, but it does show how we as Americans can respond to our past, to acknowledge a shameful part of our history and to confront it rather than sweeping it under the rug and moving on without conversation. Josh Venkataraman was a student at the University of Florida last year when he studied this story in a history class. He was so moved by the injustice, he began to contact the families, many of whom are here today. He started a petition, getting thousands of signatures. He wrote to representatives, state senators, to the media. He was his own grassroots movement. Josh is a young American who did not want to see this injustice swept under the rug. He was moved to take action. It is that spirit of bipartisan action that should be an inspiration to all of us today.
So I wrote this book in after I found out about this, about the Grove and Four and the historical injust, injustice. And it's, it's, moved me, and it's moved me so much. And through the way, when I met these family members and we finished and we've gone through this all together, it's become very personal to me and to everyone that ha I have been with through this whole journey. And just want to thank everyone. Thank you. Um, I, I agree. When I first started this two years ago, um, I, I didn't expect this, all of this. And I think what I've learned the most through this is how much it really is a cliche, but it does take a village. I mean, all of these people here surrounding me, these are the people that made this happen, that helped to rewrite history and change this wrong that was done in our state that, you know, we're making our state a better place. We're getting rid of this scar that's haunted our state. Um, so I want to thank Representative DuBose, Senator Farmer, um, everyone else standing right here because uh, you know, it really does take a spark to get this big fire moving and make change happen. Uh, uh, speaking of working together, this was in the, in the House, it was a bipartisan effort. And I want to acknowledge my colleagues and thank you for your continued support. Uh, Representative Stark, Representative Russell, Representative Cortez, Representative Daniels, Representative Brown, Representative Lee, Speaker of course, Representative Williams, Representative Watson, Representative Newton, and I'm not sure if I, no, 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 I'm going to come to, uh, Rep oh, Representative Metz just, uh, Chair Metz just joined us. Uh, it's actually within his district, and before I close out, I'm going to give him the opportunity if he wants to come and say a word, and as he approaches the podium, I'm going to also recognize uh, Representative Fisher. He's my co-prime sponsor. After he read the book, he came to me and he said, Representative DuBose, can I be your co-prime? I said, absolutely. And he started getting um, members on the other side of the aisle to co-sponsor. And at one point, he called me and said, I think I have more Republicans than you have Democrats. <laughs> and it sparked a friendly challenge. And as of today, we have over 50 co-sponsors. So this is when we're at our best. This is a bipartisan effort, um, but before I close out, I want to allow Chair Metz to come and share a couple of words with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. And I do represent District 32, which includes Groveland, and I've been working on this for a while. I read the uh, Devil in the Grove book cover to cover last year. I was working my way through legal lynching, and there's a grave injustice that occurred in this case. And I believe it's never too late to do the right thing, even though we're now almost 70 years after the incident. We have a record that we can go back to and look at, and we can see where grave injustice has occurred and the violation of fundamental constitutional rights that occurred in this case. And so I believe this is an appropriate action for the state of Florida to correct the record. And it's not something that we should do lightly because obviously we recognize separation of powers. We don't like the courts legislating from the bench and we shouldn't have the legislature trying to relitigate court cases. But in this case, we have a record of grave injustice that occurred over a number of years so many unusual things occurred in this case that make it call out for the action that we're now going to take today on the floor. So I want to thank Senator Farmer, uh, Representative DuBose, Chairman Sprouls, and all the colleagues here uh, who are here today to support this effort. I'm proud to be a part of it in a very small way, and I hope that we can move forward and that the families will feel some measure of closure from the action that we take today. Thank you very much. And. Um, in closing, I'll say again, this is really when we're at our best, when not only we cross the aisles, but we have the community. Like I said, this is a big puzzle, and there's so many pieces, and everyone had their piece to carry, and it's all about timing, and God knows best, and he uh, has deemed this the time for this to move forward. And in closing, we had representation uh, here from the Greenlee family, the Shepherd family, and the Irvin family, because there's a connection there between the Irvins and the uh, Shepherds. And, um, but to those families, and including the Thomas family, I will keep this closing uh, brief. 
and simply say the state of Florida was wrong and we're sorry. Thank you. Are there any questions? Any questions? All right. Thank you.